Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the full review of the Samsung Galaxy S7. So this is a phone that's similar in a lot of ways to its predecessor, the one that came before it, which would be the Galaxy S6. So the easiest way to talk about this phone and to completely understand it is to look at all the differences between it and the one that came before it. So this is everything you need to know that's new and different about the Galaxy S7. So first of all, the body is slightly different. It's slightly upgraded. And most people hear that to mean it got thinner, but this phone is actually slightly thicker. And I'm calling that the upgrade because it's allowing one, a much smaller camera bump on the back, and two, a much smaller home button slash fingerprint reader bump on the front. I actually had a lot less accidental home button presses with this phone, so that's nice. And the phone is still pretty thin, but the extra space inside is packing a much larger 3000 milliamp hour battery. So that's pretty important. And then they focused on the shape and the handle a little bit more. So the edges are less sharp. The phone is easier to pick up and hold. And the back glass is more rounded on the sides like the Galaxy Note 5. And then the rest is all the same premium materials from last year. So Gorilla Glass 4 on the front and back, and then metal rails on the sides, and really nice buttons. I don't think Samsung gets enough credit for how nice the buttons are. They pretty much have the power button and volume buttons on point. So overall, you get the idea that the build is slightly improved, but still very familiar. In fact, this is definitely still the slipperiest phone I've ever held or used alongside the Note 5. Like this has slipped out of my pocket while sitting in a car multiple times. But yeah, overall the shape and build of this phone is definitely one of those incremental improvements from last year. Okay, the next difference is IP68. This phone is now totally dust sealed and water resistant. So you can use it in the rain or near a pool or at a beach or get splashed or whatever, it's fine. And it does it all internally. So there's no like weird flaps or anything over the USB ports or the headphone jack. I love that the design stays the hit as it gets waterproofed here. The one downside is definitely the speakers. The speakers suffer massively here. Pretty sure the Galaxy S7 just got the biggest downgrade of any speakers on a smartphone. They're now way tinnier and more distorted sounding. And you can blame that fully on the waterproofing. So the Galaxy S7 also got the micro SD card slot back. I did not expect that to actually happen. I threw that out there in an older like predictions video as a sort of a oddball feature that might happen, but you do actually have it now. You do have expandable storage in the Galaxy S7. And of course you can't have a new flagship phone without all your new flagship specs. And you get all of that here. So in the US that's the Snapdragon 820 chip, Adreno 430, and four gigabytes of RAM and performance is definitely up to snuff to match. This is a really quick and snappy phone, again, like the Galaxy S6 was, and we're getting much improved RAM management as well. That's big here. I'm glad to see this phone handle multitasking that much better than its predecessor, which kind of occasionally had issues holding apps and RAM. With metal and glass, it still does get a bit warm, even with the new internal cooling, but nothing too severe, just a little warm to the touch when you're gaming for a while or doing some heavy browsing. But just with everyday use, it's fine. Wireless charging heats up a bit, but I'll talk about that later. So yeah, this phone is fast again. That's one of its biggest strengths and definitely one of the biggest reasons to get it. So the last but not least, actually the biggest difference with the new S7 is the new camera. This new 12 megapixel camera, this, is my favorite camera on any smartphone right now. And that's putting it on top of a very good heap of other smartphone cameras out there. And I gotta say, there is no shooter that consistently makes me feel as confident as a photo and video taker as the Galaxy S7. And that's what really makes a good photo experience for me. So the camera app opens with that double tap of the home button really quick from anywhere, again, super fast, and it's immediately ready for a shot. There's no shutter lag or anything. It's very quick to just grab a photo. And a lot of people look at the new 12 megapixel photo number and think, oh wait, that's less megapixels than last year. It's not a big deal, 12 megapixels is still plenty. And these pixels are now larger, which along with the optical image stabilization and the huge f1.7 aperture should help a lot with low light, should. Uh, the photo quality in auto mode is again, very typical Samsung. So very bright, punchy colors, lots of saturation and contrast and sharpening. Uh, they've been doing this forever, so I get it. One thing that's more notable is that f1.7 aperture makes it so easy to blow backgrounds out of focus. Uh, even in broad daylight with normal subjects, if you get close enough to the subject, you can get that blurry background, which is pretty crazy. And the new dual pixel autofocus handles this shallow depth of field really well. Pretty much always nails it. So photos pretty much always look solid coming off this phone. I'd say the biggest weakness is it tends to overexpose a bit in daylight conditions. There are definitely more blown highlights than crushed shadows. Although throughout the pictures I've taken, it's actually not the best in low light. Here's an example of the exact same picture I took on the Galaxy S7 versus my Nexus 6P. Now Nexuses haven't even always had the best image processing, 
but it clearly beats the S7 here. So I would have liked to have seen, I guess, less grain from the S7 camera and low light and a little bit more control exposure during the day. Here's the thing though, that autofocus is the best part of this new camera and it's crazy fast. Also in video mode, it's just as fast, making this pretty much the ideal for high quality video. If you wanna shoot 4K video in the easiest possible way and guarantee usable footage, this phone is the one to have. Overall, the fast autofocus combined with the fast aperture and the fast camera app make this the fastest smartphone camera alongside the iPhone and it's a pleasure to use for that reason. Oh, and that front facing camera is not bad also, five megapixels and also an f1.7 aperture and an even wider angle than the back camera. It's not quite as sharpened or oversaturated, but it takes a pretty good selfie if you're into that. So there you have it, a couple of incremental but important changes that make the Galaxy S7 a different beast. Plus, I guess all the things about the Galaxy S6 that are already pretty great. The best display in any smartphone, the 5.1 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED that gets super bright the premium materials, the fast home button fingerprint reader, that's I think second only to Touch ID, and some quick charging and wireless charging of a new larger battery. And the actual life for me with a larger battery was really impressive too. I would give myself like a B plus or A minus for as far as how long this lasts during the day. Pretty much never had to charge it before the end of the day. And I was getting somewhere between five to five and a half hours of screen on time typically, which is a big improvement over the notably bad battery life of the Galaxy S6. So that's something I was really excited to see. And you also still have fast charging. You still have wireless charging. You still have fast wireless charging. It does get a little bit warm to the touch when you're wireless charging, but other than that, pretty much no complaints about the new battery. Now it's definitely not perfect, it still has its flaws. I made an entire video about that, and if you wanna watch that, it'll be linked in this corner or below that like button. And it's missing a couple things, you know, it doesn't have an IR blaster, some people were confused about the dropping of that. It's also, like I mentioned, the slipperiest phone ever, and definitely looks and feels better with a case, or even better, a nice skin on it. Plus, you kinda hide the fingerprints and make it easier to hold. I'll link the dbrand skin below, I think that matte looks clean. And it's definitely still not everyone's favorite software. So this Samsung skin on top of Android, obviously since it's Android, you can still go to town with the skins and custom launchers and really make it your own. But someone like me will do that within minutes of setting it up. Someone who's not really into it might take a while and might not like it out the box. But overall, I really like this phone. Some of the little stuff that used to be third-party apps, Samsung is picking up on it and building it into their own software. So stuff like the always-on display, is a nice touch. So for example, since it's always an AMOLED display, you can choose to always have a clock, calendar, or still image when the phone is sleeping. And it avoids burn-in by moving around the display periodically, doesn't burn too much battery. I think it's cool. If you use the calendar a lot, it would be cool to have that always on. I'm not sure why you'd want a still image, but hey, there's always that option. But yeah, it's taking a lot of stuff like this and adding it into their own software. So if you don't find it on day one, then you'll probably find it a little while down the road after using this phone for a while. But at the end of the day, the big question is, is this Galaxy S7 worth the upgrade over whatever phone you have now? If you have something like a Galaxy S6 or even a high-end phone from last year, it might not be worth all the changes. The couple of things you do get, if you're really, really into video, this is the best video camera on a smartphone now. And if you're really into having a better battery life, this is definitely a better battery life than the Galaxy S6. But if you're gonna upgrade, if you have to, and you're not really sure, I would at least opt for the Galaxy S7 Edge, which is a little bit bigger, but you also get those Edge features and you get an even larger battery for even better battery life. Overall, a pretty well-rounded experience, no pun intended. That was totally intended. So that's been it. Thanks for watching this review video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Feel free to give it a thumbs up if you do, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.